Australian paleontologists have pieced together the story behind a dinosaur skull found in Queensland in 2018. Joining us live with more is Steve Porapanda, paleontologist from Curtin University. Steve, really appreciate you making the time for us. Thank you. Tell us, what sort of dinosaur was it? How big was it? Tell us what we know about the story behind the skull. So basically the dinosaur that we dug up is a member of a species called Diamantinosaurus matildae. So it's a type of sauropod dinosaur, the long necked dinosaurs that are familiar as things like Brontosaurus, Brachiosaurus, Diplodocus. The one that we dug up, Diamantinosaurus, uh, the specimen's nicknamed Anne, it would have been about 16 metres long, so almost as long as a tennis court, about three metres tall at the shoulder, so about the height of a basketball ring, and weighed as much as four or five uh, adult elephants. So a big unit. Really big unit, absolutely. I'm glad that you um, got to say the name of it and not me. It sounds like a mouthful. How long did this dinosaur live, do we know? Uh, in terms of like how long the individual lived uh, before it died, we don't know exactly. We, we could work it out if we were able to cut open some of its bones and see if there were any growth rings or something like that. But we haven't established that with this one yet. We do know it wasn't fully mature when it was uh, when it died. And we know that because the vertebrae in its hips were not all fused together. They do fuse together in, a, in an adult uh, dinosaur. Um, so yeah, still had some growing to do, uh, still had replacement teeth that it never got to use uh, in its skull as well. So yeah, quite quite amazing to, to find a sort of sub-adult or, or not quite fully grown uh, sauropod dinosaur. And how long ago did this all happen? So Diamantinosaurus as a species lived around 100 to 95 million years ago in central Queensland, what's now Winton uh, in the outback. Uh, and it would have been a very different environment back then. Uh, instead of the grassy plains that you see in Winton today, it would have been conifer forest. So bunya, monkey puzzles, uh, those sort of pine trees you would see dotting the Winton area. And in the understory, ferns, flowering plants, cycads, horsetails, even ginkgo, you name it, there were all sorts of plants. It was a much wetter environment when this dinosaur was around. So Stephen, what does this discovery tell us about broader theories we have about dinosaurs? I was reading it that it could suggest that dinosaurs did travel between South America and, and Australia. Does this discovery firm that up? It certainly does, yeah. So when we compare bone for bone, the skull of Anne with a skull from another dinosaur from South America, it's hard to pick differences between the two. They're really, really similar to each other. And what that implies is that these dinosaurs took advantage of a particularly warm period in Earth's prehistory between around 100 to 95 million years ago when Antarctica was completely ice-free, covered in forest, and would have been a quite nice habitat for long-necked plant-eating sauropod dinosaurs. And so it's quite easy to envisage herds of these animals traipsing south in the summer um, and getting you know, getting the vegetation down in the Antarctic summer. And then some of them might have gotten lost or deliberately migrated into South America um, in, in, in autumn and then, then escaped the darkness uh, that, uh, that would have shrouded Antarctica for three months of the year. Stephen, how rare is it to find dinosaur bones in Australia? Are there paleontologists like yourself constantly out there looking or is it more likely that someone stumbles across them accidentally? How does it work? Generally speaking, yeah, most of these fossils are discovered by accident and not by paleontologists who are out there looking for them either. They're often found by graziers, landowners in the Winton area, and they will then alert the museums in the regions, especially, about these discoveries. And then if the museums have got the resources and the, and the time, they will go and dig those fossils up. Uh, with the Anne site, I think it was only discovered the year prior to us digging it up. Uh, and so it was a pretty fresh one, but sometimes we'll go to sites that we've known about for more than a decade and just haven't had the time or the opportunity to dig. So we know there are plenty of sites out there, but the fact of the matter is that in the Winton area, we have currently probably only dug with the Australian Age Dinosaurs Museum sites on maybe five or six properties, and there are hundreds out there. The Winton formation is massively extensive. It means the potential for future discoveries of dinosaurs like Anne, or hopefully quite different ones as well, is just massive. Wow, very exciting. It sounds like there could be more to come. Stephen Parapat, really appreciate you talking us through it. Thanks so much.